What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and it's official that PAL World has become the new breakout hit of 2024 already, with the game currently, as of the making of this video, surpassing 7 million paid users on Steam. That's incredible, and I'm happy for the devs, but of course, not everyone is thrilled about this. And now there's some discourse surrounding things like PAL World's rejection of concepts like gender when it comes to body types. And Asmongold spoke some facts recently, and honestly, that's what made me want to make this video to begin with. And I'll also speak on a Naughty Dog developer who believes that PAL World shouldn't exist in more. Firstly, let's look at that body gender nonsense thing with this article from Niche Gamer, where PAL World is being criticized by fans for including body types over gender. In case you don't know, this has become an ever-growing normalizing concept throughout video games. Not only has PAL World done this, but so has other games like Baldur's Gate 3 and more. The reason it annoys people, myself included, is because it's a way for devs to remove the concepts of gender from body so people who identify as all kinds of things cannot feel as limited, I guess. But of course, whenever you play these sorts of games like Pal World for example, when the feminine-like body type is chosen, of course the chest cannot be uncovered like it can be in the other masculine body types. Why this matters is because no matter what these options state, it's not really body type 1 or 2 if both types don't get treated equally in terms of things like nudity or other options. So in reality, it's just erasing male and female from the game's definitions, but still doing the same shit with a different name. Of course, like I said, PAL World has this too, and fans are annoyed by it. However, there was a very interesting post on Asmongold's Reddit, where a user compiled a bunch of key points from an interview the PAL World devs had that this user translated. One of these talking points said, the gender-neutral type A character creator was likewise because Americans sometimes want to make very ugly characters. And there it is, fellas, plain as day to see for everyone. As you can see, the only reason why PAL World's devs even included that option and named it that was simply because of the fact that they're fully aware of the woke stupid nonsense that permeates throughout the Western gaming industry and beyond. I mean, they even say in that same Reddit post that they added guns to PAL World solely because they knew if they were going to sell the game in American markets, that Western gamers enjoy shooting things. You could take what these devs said as insulting, but it's simply the truth, and you can't lie that they clearly know the audience out there. But circling back to that body type thing, it sucks because while I understand Japanese devs just want to make their games accessible and more desirable, I want to firmly state that the overwhelming majority of players out there these days do not want this stuff at all. Most of us do not condone or subscribe to concepts like body type 1 or 2, or refer to ourselves by made-up pronouns. Whether these weirdos want to admit it or not, the majority of the world is still not subscribing to this nonsense. And we don't want this pandering crap in our media because it doesn't represent the majority. Unfortunately, like many things these days, a lot of stuff is being retrofitted and transformed in order to cater to a staggeringly small amount of users out there who are not only a very small group when compared to the actual demographic, but it's been proven time and again that these woke freaks don't really support things anyways. You can pander all you want by inserting mental illness haircut characters and made-up pronouns, but the reality is that the most amount of support you'll get from virtue signaling weirdos is a tweet or them supporting what you're doing by saying something about it. But the truth is that a lot of these woke freaks are jobless, and if they do have an income, they either don't buy new games or support the things that they are so vocally championing on a daily basis. If this were true, then games like the Saints Row reboot should have done amazing, but it flopped and that studio died. And if you want to look at an upcoming game as of the making of this video anyway that panders to these woke freaks, look no further than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. That's full of woke nonsense and other crap most players are tired of like battle passes and microtransactions. And I can almost guarantee you that Suicide Squad will likely not sell very well, and I'm going to further predict that the game does not score very well on Metacritic either. And my last prediction, which I hope is not true and I pray that I'm wrong, is that Rocksteady's newest game fails in every regard and the entire studio shuts down. The reason why I'm so doom and gloom when it comes to stuff like Suicide Squad is because it's a game made by a progressive company that has gutted the entire heart and soul of what fans want from that studio and the experiences that they make. As opposed to PAL World, which may seem simple at first glance, but PAL World proves the same thing as Hogwarts Legacy did too. 
And that's that people don't care largely about the politics or pandering of things. All they want is something fun that runs well and is worth the money that they spent on it. Remember around this time last year, these same freaks were crying and pissing themselves over Hogwarts Legacy's existence. Because J.K. Rowling doesn't believe transgender ideology. It ended up creating a real nasty echo chamber when Legacy released, with many outlets condoning the game and writing that if you play the game, you're not an ally and all of this other nonsense. Of course, this enacted the Streisand effect and Hogwarts Legacy ended up selling like crazy and has officially become the highest selling game of 2023, even beating out Call of Duty that year. I played it day one and I even 100%ed the game and I got my platinum trophy. I thought Hogwarts Legacy was great and I'm not even a Harry Potter fan myself, so that's saying something. And Pal World, like Legacy before it, is getting attacked because it rejects a lot of the nonsense of current day gaming and modern sensibilities. Besides the body type nonsense of course, but it's funny realizing that that was only done to make woke freaks shut up in the first place. One of these woke weirdos by the way is a Naughty Dog dev, in case you don't know what that developer studio is, they're the people who make games like Uncharted and The Last of Us. Anyway, one of the developers over there is a senior artist named Del Walker who said in a now deleted tweet that, My gut is telling me Pal World was made nefariously. I just have no proof, just dev intuition. No accusations until proof, but there's some hidden malfeasance here, I can sense it. Of course, Dell deleted this tweet because as it's already been reported, Pal World has pretty much been cleared of AI use and the game is simply made by a small group of base Japanese devs who just wanted to make cool games for people to play. This didn't stop Dell from doubling down where they continued by saying this, Making a game is just so difficult, they're cheating somehow, I just can't pinpoint how. And of course, like I said, Dell deleted all of this, but the internet never forgets. It's funny seeing yet another developer at a company as woke as Naughty Dog trying to throw mental gymnastics around, and claim that Pal World's devs are cheating somehow because they made a fun game that's taken the internet by storm. People like Del Walker can't fathom how a game that isn't full of identity political nonsense and pandering like The Last of Us Part 2 was is somehow doing such huge numbers just like Hogwarts Legacy before it. And the answer is simple because Pal World isn't interested in nonsensical virtue signaling for the most part and that's alien to western devs. Because everything must be full of messages and checking of boxes, otherwise these things don't get made in the first place in Western studios. And let's not forget that The Last of Us Part 2 may have been a critical darling amongst other woke reviewers, but it didn't even sell half of what the remaster of the original game sold. Proving that while sure Part 2 got showered with praise because of its lesbian relationship and attention to detail, a lot of fans hated the game and its story and the sales represent that. And of course, if you look at Del Walker's profile, there it is right there. They used to work at Rocksteady. Of course, they went from one virtue signaling studio to another. Honestly, it just feels as if devs, weirdo fans, and game journos are hating on Pal World because it doesn't represent what they want out of modern gaming. Like Hogwarts, Pal World is focused on just delivering well on its asking price and giving people some fun gameplay. Then you have journalists like this one at Eurogamer who did an early impressions recently on Pal World where it's titled, Is Pal World Actually Any Good? Of course not. Like, listen to what this journalist says. I can't believe they actually think this is a gotcha dude. They said, and I quote, My best attempt then, I think, would be to have a go at reverse engineering the problem with Pal World myself. Much of the grumpiness around Pal World so far, and admittedly a not insignificant portion of mine, comes from its success. If all of this feels a bit brutal for a discussion of an indie game that came out of nowhere, it's worth bearing that success in mind. Pal World is wildly popular, not just in terms of sales, but actual player satisfaction. Its Steam review numbers, around 57,000 reviews at Very Positive, are huge outliers for a game this early in its life especially an early access one from an independent developer in Japan with seemingly minimal pre-launch marketing buzz and no major publisher behind it. Cynicism coupled with success is already enough to leave you feeling sour, end quote. Like, are you kidding me? The reason you think Pal World is bad is because it managed to take over the internet and explode in sales? Without the help of game journalists shilling for it, that's the reason why you're upset about it. 
The fact this journalist named Chris Tapsell says it himself that he can't fathom how a game with no game journalist support behind it is selling how it is? with their user reviews it's getting and the positive buzz is causing his brain to implode. These journalists, genuinely, I'm not kidding you dude, these people hate it when games like this and stuff like Hogwarts Legacy exist and excel. Because these games should have failed in their eyes because they didn't get the stamp of approval from these virtue signaling morons. They actually think nothing should be successful or be able to be enjoyed unless they give their approval of it first. That's not only delusional, but it shows how insanely out of touch modern gaming journalists are. Like this guy here said in response to this article, Pal World costs as much as a Call of Duty skin. Like, come on. How are we not celebrating this more? So many Western games are not worth the price that they ask for. And it's amazing to me how Western journalists get so butthurt constantly when they see Japanese devs, both big and small, just absolutely destroying them in terms of sales and player satisfaction. It's the whole Elden Ring thing all over again when Western devs at places like Guerrilla Games and Ubisoft got mad that Elden Ring was eating their lunch and shitting all over them in praise, success, and reviews. I'm telling you dude, the entire Western gaming space is one giant echo chamber where they all just parrot the same shitty old tired ideas constantly. As I've said in a previous video a while back, I'm convinced that's also why Hogwarts Legacy didn't get nominated for anything at the Game Awards or other websites. How the hell does a single player, no microtransaction, open world RPG not get nominated for anything when it came to award season? When it ran well on PS5 at least and sold more than any other game that year. The simple reason is because of politics and these journalists and the studios who pander all collectively decided that to recognize Hogwarts Legacy's success would be to admit that their way of doing things is wrong and out of date. And I guarantee you, when it comes to awards season in 2024, you will likely not see Pal World nominated for anything either. Because any review site that gives Pal World a glowing score or positive praise will be looked down upon by their activist friends. God damn dude, I'm so sick of these freaks ruining gaming. Video games are my favorite thing to enjoy in this world, I'm not even kidding. And I love this medium so much and it pisses me off to no end seeing these morons try to destroy everything I love and ignore anything that actually gives people what they want. Even Asmongold spoke on this and honestly this is what led me to make this video to begin with. It's important to hear what he has to say, so please listen. Uh, there it is. What's your creative vision? I don't have a creative vision. I just want to make a game that people like. Uh, to me, this just shows that all that matters is what gamers knew all along. A good gameplay loop. That's f***ing it. Is there tired of safe games that are invented and created by people who are constantly worried about offending somebody who has a mental illness on the internet? Like some freak on social media that gets offended by some comment that a video game character makes? This person should be in a mental asylum. They shouldn't be a target audience. The only target audience they should have is for people that make straight jackets. And the reality is that these people have been pandered to for 10 years. And finally, developers, especially people that are in Japan and Korea, and they aren't part of this freak culture that we have, are making games that are just fun. The, I think the rest of normal people are just tired of these, again, freaks telling us that these things are wrong. I don't want to hear from a grown adult man-child that they're too old for shock humor whenever they're reviewing a game that's basically Pokemon. Just stop it. Get away from me. Yeah, these are the people that lay. They have to lay down after they make a phone call. They have a panic attack. This is the person that you're going to listen to? You're going to listen to this fucking freak? AAA developers can't grasp such a simple concept. Well, the reason why a lot of AAA developers can't grasp the simple concept is is because AAA development studios are infested with the freaks that people hate. That's where they are. They're they're being consulted. They're people that are informing game decisions and they're trying to change culture to reinforce their totally distorted worldview that isn't shared by any normal person. But at the end of the day, I think that people just want to play a fun game and not have to think about anything political whenever they play the game. Average, normal, everyday people are tired of that shit. And he's right. I'm sick and tired of video games bending over backwards, making games for people who don't buy them 
and are completely out of touch when it comes to the general gaming audience out there. We need these companies to realize that we don't want these live service multiple pronouns bullshit experiences anymore. We never wanted them. We've told you so many times already to stop making these games and what did they do? They call us bigots, fools, and phobic slurs when in reality all we want is fun video games that don't talk down to us and give us something to do so we can escape reality for a bit. But these woke freaks are so marinated in the sauce they can't help themselves anymore and every year it becomes even more evidently clear that they will not stop no matter what. And they will allow thousands of devs to lose their jobs and let entire studios submerge and fall to ruin instead of just coming to terms with the fact that what they are doing is not working and people don't want it. We really don't want woke Suicide Squad rejecting their iconic outfits and pandering bullshit with diverse casts. We wanted a Batman game, dude. We don't give a shit how many polygons are in some lesbian character's face when they look sad in a cutscene. We just want to have fun. Why is that so hard to understand for these people? Video games used to be fun. They used to be worth your money and time. And it seems like every time a game comes along that actually values the player's time and money and gives a quality product, whether it's Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate 3 or Hogwarts Legacy and now of course Pal World as well, it's like these journalists and developers don't celebrate these achievements but instead assemble like a diversity ran Avengers and they attack and tear down these games because they're not filled with enough messages or business practices that they want to become the norm. Elden Ring, Hellworld, and more. These games all represent what players have been yearning for when it comes to games. We just want to have fun. It's really that simple. We're tired of being talked down to and the fact the instant gut reaction of these freaks is to attack and belittle the paying customer base, it tells you everything that you need to know about them. They don't view us as people, we're just cash cows to them. We don't exist in their minds within a leveled playing field with them. We are of course beneath them, we are the masses. And they are the chosen virtue few out there and we must accept their gospel or be excommunicated and I hate that. I don't subscribe to that, I don't want this shit to ruin Japanese games and I mean just look recently, you got Tekken 8 and Infinite Wealth. Both games scoring high on Metacritic and it's incredible. We should be celebrating those games alongside Pal World and others. But all these psychos with mental illness see is the enemy when they look at games like Pal World or Elden Ring. Like that Naughty Dog dev said, their pandering brain can't fathom a game that is player focused and content rich first doing well. Because they've been conditioned to appeal to the woke mind virus and the mentally ill that they're surrounded with. I hate that this is what modern gaming has become, but it needs to stop. We need to enjoy games and stop filling them with politics. I can't wait for stuff like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or Dragon's Dogma 2. I just want cool games where I can do dope things and not have some half-shaven haired freak yelling their pronouns at me and shoving rainbow flags in my face. We're tired of this and if Pal World proves anything is that these journalists and developers, hell even some Pokemon fans too, they don't want quality and actual no strings attached fun to become the norm. Because if it does then everything they've been conditioned to believe and know would then be proven wrong and they can't handle that. Ultimately, I just wanted to end it here and say I will never subscribe to this nonsense and I will not under any circumstances bend the knee to their politics and agendas. We must stop bending everything we do to appeal these mentally ill freaks and start catering to the sane majority instead. Screw these people, make video games great again and keep rejecting their garbage. Whether it's Eurogamer, Naughty Dog or others, these places are filled with these kinds of people. And whenever something great happens like Pal World, remember who tends to fold their arms and cry about it every single time because those are the people we need to keep our eyes on and I will never stop fighting. But as always, thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe to help the channel out, and thanks to my patrons as always. Have fun playing video games and screw these people. I'll see you in the next one.